lunch in the lunchbox. It was all than every. But you see what God did? He breathed on it. He blessed it. And you know what? The Bible says God was pleased with it. Everyone ate. They filled the baskets. And there was left. Overs. God can do more with your little bit than you think you can do with it on your own. God can do more with the little bit that you have, the small idea that you have. He can do way more with it than you think you can do with it. You just got to put it in his hand. Come on all over the building. Would you do me a favor and stand right where you are? The Spirit of God is in this place. We've already summoned it. We asked it to break out. We asked it to break our walls down. Now, there's the response that we have as the believers and recipients of his presence. By now, your hands should be clapping. By now, your mouth should be open because the Spirit of our God is in the place. And that means where God is, everything that I need is present. That means if I'm sick, my healing is here. If I'm down, my joy is here. If I'm weak, my strength is here. It's breaking. It's breaking out in the house this morning. Would you open up your mouth and give God great praise? Great praise. Great praise. Great praise. Great praise. Great praise. Great praise. Come on. He's breaking out in this house this morning. He's going to do something unusual. He's going to do something different. But your level of expectation has to level up. Come on, level up, level up. Level up, level up, level up. Level up, level up. Come on, break out, break out, break out. Come on, you want heaven to touch earth. That means we have to simultaneously be doing what heaven is doing. That means by now, the angels are around the throne. They're worshiping. They're crying, holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is filled with this glory. Holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is filled. Come on, let's join heaven. Let's join heaven. Let's join heaven. Right now they're bowing. Right now they're worshiping. Right now they're adoring him. Come on, worship, worship, worship. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence that's here. Thank you for your power that's here. God, we know when your power shows up, everything that we need shows up. Our healing is here. Our joy is here. Our strength is here. Our peace is here. Everything we need is in your presence this morning. So, Father, we say you have your way. Break out in this place today. Do what only you can do. Have your way in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God. I summoned you this morning. I say, fall fresh even now. Go from heart to heart and breast to breast. Move by your power and your anointing. Do something different in the place. And we'll leave this place with the testament that we've been in your presence. Leaving to God be the glory for the things that you have done. Father, we count it done right now in the name of Jesus. If you believe that prayer, would you clap your hands and give God great praise in the place? They told me the 11 o'clock crowd was a little different. Would you help them make that truthful this morning? Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a good God. Thank you, Lord. We honor the Lord in his presence this morning. Certainly God is in the building. And I'm glad to be where he is. Amen. We honor um, God. Amen. For your pastor. Amen. Reverend Hall, would you clap your hands for your pastor? Amen. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you, Calvary, for having me. Amen. I'm excited about what God is going to do in this place this morning. To my friend, Aubrey, thank you for the invitation. Amen. I bring you greetings from New Life Cathedral where my pastor is Bishop Robert Rochford. You can clap your hands for him. He allowed me to come and stand before you this morning. We are excited to be in the house of God. I thank God for some of New Life being here. Amen. To support me and to push me this morning. We thank God for the great thing that he's going to do in this place. Let me hear the young people make some noise. I like this section. There we go. I just need to know who I'm here for this morning. Amen. 
Thank God for Imani Youth Ministry and the longevity in what it is that God is doing in the lives of our young people. Didn't we have a great time yesterday? The Lord was with us all day, and we're excited about what God is doing in the lives of our young people. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's go to John chapter 5. Glory to God. John chapter 5, we're going to begin. We're going to begin at verse 6. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We want to honor also, amen, our first lady hall. Amen. Just wave your hand at me. Bless you, woman of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank God for her. Y'all could have did better than that. Amen. Come on, it's still Woman's History Month. Come on, clap your hands for the set lady at the house. Glory to God, amen. Let's go to John chapter 6. We're beginning at verse 5. When you have it, say, I have the word. It's a little low. I'm going to wait for some of y'all. It's all right, 8 o'clock, did the same thing. Amen, we honor God. Amen, I like to have fun in church. It's where I spend most of my time. So we ought to have a good time while we're here. Amen. When you have it, say, I have the word. There we go. I'm reading from the Good News Translation, so our wording may be a little different. And it reads on this wise, here begins the reading of God's word. Jesus looked around and saw that the large crowd was coming to him. So he asked Philip, where can we buy enough food to feed all these people? He said this to test Philip. Actually, he already knew what he would do. Philip answered for everyone to even have a little. It would take more than 200 silver coins to buy enough bread. Another one of his disciples, Andrew, who was Simon's Peter's brother, said, there is a boy here who has five loaves of barley bread and two fish, but that will certainly not be enough for all of these people. Make the people sit down, Jesus told them. There was a lot of grass there. So all the people sat down. There were about 5,000 men. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God, and distributed it to the people who were sitting there. He did the same with the fish, and they all had as much as they wanted. When they were all full, he said to his disciples gather the pieces left over and let us not waste one bit so they gathered all that was there and filled the 12 baskets with pieces left over from the five barley loaves and the people had eaten I want to read verse 9 again and it reads that there is a boy here who has five loaves of barley bread and two fish that's all I wanted to um, push this morning. There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. I want to talk to you briefly um, from the subject, and this is specifically for our young people. You've got what God needs. Would you testify to the person next to you and say, neighbor, you got, okay, Listen, I'm from Brooklyn. I come from a very noisy church, and we talk back to each other. I'm going to ask you to talk to your neighbor. I'm going to ask you to lean over. I'm going to ask you to do that. Amen. You are included, included in this precinct presentation this morning, so it's important that you talk back to me. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. You got it. You got what God needs. Yeah, talk back church. I love it. Here in the text, we have Jesus and his disciples, and they're traveling across the Sea of Galilee. The Bible says that the crowd followed him. They followed Jesus because what they were attracted to. They followed Jesus because of the miracles they just saw Jesus perform. So they followed him. The Bible says that Jesus and his disciples went to the other side to rest, exhausted 
exhausted from what just transpired. Amen. They get to the other side of the sea, and Jesus and his disciples go up into the mountain, and they sit. Look what happens just when Jesus thought he might have been able to get a nap in, just when Jesus thought that a power nap was his portion, just when Jesus thought that he was about to have a snack, he looks up and sees the crowd that he left on the other side, or the crowd that he thought he left on the other side was now standing in front of him. This was the same crowd that Jesus had just left. This is the same crowd that Jesus had just taught. It's the same crowd and then that Jesus had just ministered to the same crowd was now back for more. They're back. Look what Jesus does. Jesus puts his need to the side to meet the needs of those present. Jesus, amen, doesn't think or try to come up with anything or reason to turn these people away. Jesus said, where can we buy bread to feed these people? Where can we buy bread to feed these people? Jesus realized that these people had been with him all day. They were there in Jerusalem. Some even beat him to Jerusalem. Amen. Some were even there before he got there. And here they are again. This was not just the same big crowd, but the circumstances has changed. Now, this is a big, large, hungry crowd. And this is why I'm trying to hurry up because I know when the saints get hungry... They start exhibiting behaviors that's not so Christ-like. So Jesus has a crowd in front of him. They're big, they're large, and they're hungry. Jesus says to Philip, where can we buy bread to feed these people? He asked Philip already knowing that Philip had already made up in his mind why what Jesus, why what Jesus was asking wasn't going to work. Philip had already made up in his mind that these people are not going to eat today because feeding this many people would be impossible. Philip replies, we can't afford to feed them. Forget about enough food. We don't have enough money to feed these people. Philip looks at Jesus and says 200 silver pieces isn't even enough to feed these people. It's not even enough for everybody in here to get a bite. It's not enough. It's not enough to get a bite. So let alone each of these people walking away with a slice. No, it's not happening. Now, it's important that we understand, amen, where Philip is coming from. Philip was a mathematician, so he understood that numerically and naturally, this was impossible. Philip even broke it down to the point where he calculated how many days they was going to have to work. Amen. To earn the wages. Amen. To first buy the bread. Amen. Purchase the bread. Amen. Then bake the bread. Then give the bread. He breaks it down. So Philip understood that this was in Possible. So after Philip gives careful thought, amen, he thinks through the whole process, amen, from the physical perspective, amen, Philip came to the conclusion that this was impossible. This was impossible. Notice, notice here, young people, amen, that all while Philip is talking, trying to defend, amen, his conclusion, Jesus has not said a word. Jesus has not said a word. Jesus has not spoken since he asked the question, first lady, where can I buy bread? Jesus hasn't said anything. Let me tell you why Jesus don't speak when doubt is present. Because Jesus is not interested in hearing why it's not going to work. He's not interested in hearing why we don't know what to do. Jesus is not interested why it's not going to work. Jesus asked one question. Philip had one job. One job. Where can we buy bread? That's all Jesus wants to know. He's not interested in what's not going to work. And I can see and imagine, amen, the place of offense that Jesus is sitting in. 
you calculating how much money we need to make when I'm the answer to whatever it is that these people need right now. Jesus wants to know, where can we buy bread? Jesus already had his plate full with the task of feeding people. He didn't need no doubters around him. Jesus already had something to do. And I want to encourage you and let you know um, something about miracles. Amen. Around the church. Amen. Where I'm from, we dubbed it Miracle Month, March Miracle Month, and all that good stuff. Uh, but let me tell you something about miracles. Miracles cannot manifest where doubt is present. Miracles do not manifest where doubt is present. And Jesus is over here trying to work a miracle, but doubt is present. Philip is running his mouth about what's not going to work. And this atmosphere that Jesus was trying to create was going to be conducive for the miracle that he was about to perform. That's why it's important that when you need something from God, you watch your mouth. That you watch what's coming out of your mouth. You watch what you're declaring. You watch what you're putting in the atmosphere. Because what you say can prolong what God wants to do in your life prolong it. That's why when we was growing up, our parents told us to watch our tone. That when you ask for something and then when you want me to do something you better close it out with a please. You better close it out with a thank you. You better approach me differently because what you need from me is predicated on how you approach me. Mm -hmm. Right? So doubt sometimes is almost automatic or default. Amen. It's a default response. Amen. When there's a need and no resources. We know we've been there. I want to send my child to college. I don't think she's going to go. Why? Because the resources that I need to send her is not there. So doubt is almost default. But doubt prolongs the manifestation of miracles. Amen. This miracle here could have manifested sooner, but Philip was running his mouth. Would you tell your neighbor next to you, shh, you blocking, you holding this thing up. You holding this thing up. You got to be quiet when God is trying to move in your life could have manifested a long time ago, but Philip was talking, but this is the part I like. All while Philip was talking, Andrew was in the cut, standing there with the news that there's a boy here. There's a, there's a, there's a boy here. And I can imagine Andrew saying, Lord, I'm not sure what this little bit is going to do for these people, but I believe you. I've seen what you can do. I've seen what you did on the other side of the sea. I've seen how you open blind eyes. I see how you straighten up limbs. I've seen how you restored um, things that were broken. I've seen what you can do. There's a boy. There's a boy here. And, 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 and enjoy. Here's where Jesus, glory to God, rejoins the conversation. <laughs> Here's where Jesus rejoins the conversation. Jesus rejoins the conversation because what Jesus was waiting on showed up. What was Jesus waiting on? Jesus wasn't waiting on no boy. Jesus wasn't waiting on no lunch. Jesus wasn't waiting on no bread. Jesus wasn't waiting on no fish. Jesus was waiting on somebody to say, Lord, I believe. Jesus was waiting on somebody's faith. To kick in. So Andrew, Andrew, being optimistic, optimistic, amen, he took his eyes off the crowd and he looked to Jesus. He took his eyes and focused off the lack that was present and he took his, he put his eyes on Jesus. He focused on the fact that he was in the presence of the one that specializes. Y'all remember that song? God specializes uh, in the impossible and he can do with no other, no other, no other, no other power can do. Do. He took his eyes off the problem and put it on the one who can perform the miracle. Andrew brings to Jesus, amen, the material for the miracle. Somebody say the material. I told you I'm from Brooklyn. The material for the miracle. He says, Lord, there is 
a boy here and he has exactly what we need to get the job done. Now, prior to this miracle, Jesus restored sight to the blind. He repaired crippled limbs. But here, um, Jesus recreates. He recreates. Now, we've heard this story over and over again. You've heard it, right? We've heard this story over and over again, but recently where I read it, amen, I found a problem with this story. I have an issue with this story because we hear it over and over again, but nobody gives this boy his props. I have a problem with that. I have a problem that you didn't give the young person his props. I have a problem. That's problematic for me have a problem with that. Why? Because this boy played a prominent role in this miracle. It was his lunch. Somebody say it was his lunch. It was, it was his lunch that fed the multitude. It was his lunch that went from little to enough. Here it is. This little boy who's been with Jesus all day long. Let me pause here and encourage the young people. Ain't nothing wrong with being with Jesus all day long. You're in school all day. You were social media all day. You on Instagram all day. Ain't nothing wrong with spending a little time with Jesus. The Bible says that this boy was with Jesus all day long and he knew he was going to be with Jesus all day long because he brought a lunch. You know when you know you're going to be out all day you pack something because you know you know your sugar get low. I don't know somebody, you know, you know things happen, things happen. Start shaking. I know me. I get hungry. I start shaking. I don't know. Start forming a condition that I didn't have when I wasn't hungry. Amen. So when you're hungry, you know things, you know, you don't think rationally. I don't know. Just me. I'm testifying. Amen. You don't, you're in a bad place. So this boy knew he was going to be with Jesus all day. So he brought a lunch. And he's so excited about what's happening and so excited about what he's been witnessing and experiencing. He forgot to eat. He forgot to eat. So full of the word. We've been there so full of the word that he didn't touch his lunch. It wasn't much to eat, but it was something to hold him over if he got hungry. He didn't have much, but it was enough. It was just enough. It was exactly what God needed to get the job done. Young people, we can learn a lot from this young boy. Even at a young age, God used the little that he had to bless thousands. So don't you despise the small beginning. Don't you despise that small idea because God can use it to bless the nations. We can learn three things about this boy. Number one, this boy was special. How do we know he was special? I mean, it takes a special child to desire to be where Jesus is. He desired to be where Jesus was. He longed for the presence of Jesus. He spent his entire day with Jesus. He could have been anywhere else doing what little boys do on the Xbox, on his PSP, on doing all things that boys do in the park, playing basketball, doing all things that kids do. But the Bible says that he spent his day with Jesus. Number two, that this boy was generous. All he had was two fish and five little loaves, but he was willing to give his entire lunch to Jesus, knowing that it was all he had. He knew this is all I have to eat. I don't know if I'm going to have something when I get home, but just because Jesus wants it, I'm going to give it to him. Number three, this boy was available. Hmm? This boy was available. God used him in his lunch, just like God can use you in whatever you have. This boy was available. He wasn't just available. He was visible. He was reachable. He was where he was supposed to be. And he was able to be seen. He was able to be touched. And he was able to be brought to Jesus. Sometimes we got to come a little hither. We got to come a little closer. So when Jesus started looking for people to use, he ain't got to go too far. He sees you and he's reachable. He can grab you and he can touch you. 
So God uses exactly what this boy had. And he uses it for his glory. He turns that little small lunch into something significant. Bible says he's close, so close that Andrew sees him. My God, Andrew says, there's a boy here. There's a boy here. Come here, son. Come, bring what you got to Jesus. Why? Because Jesus needs exactly what you have. Look what Jesus does. The Bible says, after that, he tells his disciples to seek the people. He takes the loaves and the fish. Look what God does. He takes that little bit. He puts it in his hands. Jesus takes it, he touches it, he embraces it, he owns it, he blesses it. The Bible says he took the fish and the loaves and he blessed it. When you put what you have, even if it's a little bit, in the hands of God, he will bless it. He didn't just bless it, amen, he was pleased with it. The Bible says he gave thanks. God wasn't just pleased with it, but he put the miracle back in the hands of the one that said it couldn't be done. He said, come here, Philip, give this out. Come on, let me talk to you for a minute. Let me show you just how much of a doubter you are. Just let me show you just how much you fronted on me. You thought I wasn't going to be able to come through with this. Come here, Philip, let me put this miracle back in your hand. The same miracle that you said we didn't have enough money to buy. The same miracle you said we had to work days to get. The same miracle that that you said was impossible. Come here, Philip. Let me put it right back in your hands. He put the miracle back in Philip's hand. And if you allow me to use my imagination, amen, Philip is giving out the bread. And every time he broke a piece off, it grew back. Every time he took a piece of the fish off, it grew back. Every time he distributed, it grew back. And I just believe that it was still two loaves. That it, the two loaves just kept multiplying. It kept growing back. It kept expanding. It kept stretching. You ain't never make a pan of eggs and don't know how that one egg turned into a pot of eggs. But you kept scrambling and you watched that thing multiply and it multiplied. That's exactly what was happening in the text. Every time they broke off a piece, it grew back. It grew back. How something so small can be left with so much, right? Young people, you have exactly what God needs. That's all I came to drive home to you this morning because sometimes we despise our youth and we sit and chill and we say, I got time. I'll serve God when I'm 20. I'll serve God when I go to college. By then it's too late because life is about to happen and you need something to be connected to. You need something to stand on. You have exactly what God needs. Two fish, five loaves were just an ordinary lunch in the lunchbox. It was ordinary. But you see what God did? He breathed on it. He blessed it. And you know what? It became one of the mighty kids' meals. You know when they upgraded the kids' meal? It became a mighty kids' meal. And the Bible says God was pleased with it. Everyone ate. They filled the baskets. And there was left. Overs. God can do more with your little bit than you think you can do with it on your own. God can do more with the little bit that you have, the small idea that you have. He can do way more with it than you think you can do with it. You just got to put it in his hands. Understand that Jesus really didn't need these two fish. Jesus is a bad man. He could have caused fish right out of the sea and it would have came out the way you wanted it. It would have came out fried. It would have came out baked. It would have came out sauteed. It would have came out stewed. Jesus is just that bad. He could have caught the fish right out the way you wanted with butter, obey, with no seasoning, little bit of seasoning, whatever you wanted. Jesus could have caught it right out of the water just the way you wanted it. But Jesus wanted to show us the significance of what it is he can do with what you give him. Jesus could have prayed it down easy, but he wanted to use the resources that this boy had. He wanted to use this boy. He wanted to use a child. 
And I pray today that God will reveal those things to you, those things that are inside of us. Our children are full of vision. Our children are full of wisdom and desires and aspiration. And sometimes the church sits on that stuff and we want to put them in this corner and restrict them to that. But there's ministry inside of them. And it may not look like what we think they should be doing, but it's going to bring glory to God. So I pray that those things that are inside of you, that you have the courage, young people, to give it back to God. Yes, it's a small book idea, but God, I give it to you. It's a small business idea, but God, I give it to you. God, I want to excel in my academics. I give you that. I give you my brain. I give you my mind. I give you my intellect. Breathe on my mind and help me to accelerate academically for your glory. He can do it. He can do it. I pray that God does just what he did with the widow, right? He multiplied her might. It was little, but he multiplied it. And we have exactly what God needs. And we live in the era where people are comparing ourselves. Because I don't do it that way, it's not significant. Because I didn't come through those ropes and I didn't come through that route, I'm not significant. The blood of Jesus, you have exactly what God needs. Paul tells Timothy, don't let anyone put you down because you're young. Don't think less of yourself because you're young. But he said, be an example in all that you do. You have exactly what God is looking for. I'm through. Let's stand to our feet. Let's celebrate Jesus for his word. You have exactly. I said celebrate Jesus for his word, not for his preacher. wanted to drive that home to our young people because it's imperative you can remain standing we're going to progress through this that we have exactly what it is God needs whether young old middle aged wherever you are in life you have exactly what God needs to use you you ain't got to wait on nothing to met you it's already in you you just got to say, Lord, show me. What is it? Reveal it to me. And some of us already know what it is that God has placed in us. We have visions. We have goals, desires, aspirations. Those things inside, those thoughts and ideas that keep us up at night, those are the things that God has put inside of us. Those things that we can't shake, that idea that keeps popping up. That book title that just keep popping up. You can't shake it. The idea of a book. The idea of being the author. You can't shake it. Because he put it in you. The idea of being the entrepreneur. You can't shake it. Because it's in you. Use it for his glory. And this morning, we're going to offer that thing back up to God. We're going to say, God bless it. It's yours. Use it for your glory. It's not a lot, but God, I give it to you. It's exactly what you need from me. It's exactly what we need, what God needs from us. Job prophesied in the last day that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, young sons and daughters, to prophesy all of that good stuff. All that simply means is God has integrated us in his plan. God has integrated us in his will. And the power and the enforcement behind that is the spirit. We have exactly what God needs. We have his spirit. We have his wisdom. We have his guidance. We have his anointing. We have his strength. You've got what God needs. If you're here today, you have vision. You have goals. You have something that you've been sitting on. Thank you, Jesus. You have something you've been sitting on out of fear that it won't prosper, out of fear that it's not enough, out of fear that, you know, God really can't do nothing with it, out of fear that it's not going to level up to what somebody else is doing, out of fear that you can't do it, out of fear. I want you to offer that thing to God this morning because it's exactly what he needs. 
It's exactly what he needs. Come on, get it on your mind. Get it on your mind. And just tell God, God, it's yours. It's yours, God. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. My vision is yours. My business idea is yours. My book is yours. That business is yours. That school is yours. Come on, we need to open up schools. That school is yours. That after school program is yours. Ideas of, thank you, Lord, ideas of, of expansion. God is yours. The idea of building outside of, the idea of multi-purpose rooms and things of that nature. God, that's yours. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Come on, you can worship him. Father, we thank you. Father, the little that we have, we give it to you. Because we know little becomes much in your hands, God. We give it to you. It's a small idea. But we give it to you, God. Because we know you specialize in making little much. We give it to you. We give you ourselves in this moment, God. In those moments when we feel like we're insignificant, we're not of no good use, God. Father, you see us priceless in your eyes, God. We are the apple of your eye, God. You see us differently. So, Father, we even give ourselves back to you in this moment. And say, use us for your glory, God. Use us for your glory, God. That we've been sent here, God, to manifest your will in the earth, God. Father, forgive us for sitting on that which you've put inside of us. Father, forgive us. You gave it to us, but we sat on it because we thought it wasn't enough. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for not doing what it was you asked us to do, what it is that you gave us. Forgive us. Forgive us for comparing ourselves. Forgive us. Father, we say use us this morning. We say use us, God. Use our young people, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, give them the boldness to be all it is that you're calling for in this day. Help them to be the agents of change that this generation needs. Help them not to compromise or to conform. But let them boldly represent who you are. Let them boldly replicate your righteousness. Let them boldly replicate your Just that good. Come on, praise him, praise him. Worship it up. 